Okay, so the first part of my photo editing process. When I first shot RAW with the new Sony a6500, the RAW file format that they use is ARW. And Mac doesn't like that. Well, at least this version of Mac, which is a MacBook Pro with Retina. It's a 15 inch, it's a late 2013 model, an i7 processor, 16 gigabyte RAM, so on and so forth. And the operating system is El Capitan. Anyway, I had trouble going into my ARW files. They weren't showing up as a preview. I couldn't open them in any of the I have Photoshop uh, CS6 that wasn't displaying it or opening the file. Same with Lightroom 4. I did some research and then I finally got on Adobe's site and found this Adobe DNG Converter 9.8. I downloaded that, which is right here, the Adobe DNG Converter. And it worked really easy. I basically just did a batch convert selected the folder I chose all the ARW files and hit select which I won't do again and then set the location where you want them saved at you can rename them all that sort of stuff so I found it was surprisingly very fast it processed the images pretty fast into a DNG where I could then also have it displayed while I'm viewing the photo once I convert all the ARW files, I'm going to just show you a quick example of how I edit the raw files. I'm going to edit this picture. This picture is of my brother Lance. I went to his basketball game last Friday at the Viero Event Center in Kearney. When I shot this photo, I was using the 18 to 105 millimeter G lens uh, from Sony. I really do like this lens. The lowest f stop it'll go to though is four. I shot most of the images at an f stop of five and at an ISO of 12,800. I really wanted to push the limits to see how well the high ISO range would perform. So, first, the temperature is pretty accurate as it was shot. I might adjust it a little bit that's probably more lifelike to how it was around there the exposure is pretty set on how I like it honestly now I will also go in here and change the highlights the shadows the whites and the blacks so what I like to do first is with the shadows I like to bring them up and you can kind of start to see some noise up at the top in the shadows. So I'm just going to bring it up a tiny bit. You still can see a little bit of noise, but we'll take care of some of that later. And then I'm going to bring down some of the highlights. Now this is going to flatten your image somewhat, like if I were to bring it all the way down. I'm going to go right around there, I think looks okay. And then I'm just going to turn up the contrast slightly. Now with these uh, two other sliders, the whites and the blacks, what I like to do is hold down the Alt or Option button on my Mac keyboard. And when I hold that down and click on it, it's going to turn the screen mostly black. And you'll see the little spots of white. That's the highlights. And I'm just going to raise this up a little bit until I start to see some of the highlights more on the lower part of the screen. Probably right around there. And I'm going to do the same thing with the blacks, hold down the Alt or Option button on my Mac keyboard, and it's going to be all white. I'm going to slide that to the left until I have more concentrated dark spots, just like that. The clarity, I'm going to adjust a little bit. Now, if you go extreme, it's going to try to give it somewhat of a HDR effect, a high dynamic range, but it, it just kind of looks a little corny to me overdoing it. But I am going to bring it up a little bit, like so. And the vibrance, that is going to bring out a lot of the oranges I've noticed when I play with the vibrance. So later on when I go into that button here, I believe, uh, I'm going to tone down I'm going to make some more color adjustments when I get to that, that point. And the saturation, I don't really mess with on this, the basic panel here. Next, what I'm going to go into is lens correction. You'll see they have one for my Sony E-mount, the, uh, the lens I'm using here. 
And I don't use it always. Sometimes I don't think it needs the correction and the image looks good, but uh, here's just me kind of toggling back and forth. It kind of brings the subject closer um, to the camera. I think I like it. I like it on this one. So I'm going to keep that enabled on the lens correction tab. Next, I'm going to work on a little bit of sharpening. I'm just going to raise that up slightly to sharpen the image. And then here's where you'll see the noise reduction option. So I'm going to kind of zoom in. You can see a lot of noise up here and in the stands. So I'm going to bring that up, which will kind of smooth out some of that noise. Let's see. Let's really push it and see how much we can get out of there. If you want to see what it looks like if I go all the way up nearly yeah that basically took all of it out for the most part uh, let me zoom out again so yeah this actually really does a great job taking out a lot of that noise I'm gonna keep it right around probably the 70 mark here on the hue saturation luminance tab and also the grayscale usually what I do is I go in and I do mess with the saturation at this tab a little bit orange is already popping quite a bit since I turned up the variance on the, the basic tab so I'm gonna kind of counter that and punch the blues a little bit which is the color of their uniform and I've noticed the aquas kind of control the the top um, portion of the stadium so I'm gonna just kind of back that down a little bit just to make it give it more of a natural white balanced look not have that greenish aqua hue to it greens will kind of do the same thing since the lights bouncing off the green seats of the stadium so I'm gonna probably push that down I don't want to get all, rid of all the color, but about right there I think looks okay. The orange, I might pop that a little bit more, like so. And the reds, maybe just slightly like so. Okay. Now other things you can do, you can go up here towards the top and you have your adjustment brush tool. So if there was, let's say I feel his shoulder here is just a little bit too overexposed. What I, what I can do is set this exposure down just a little bit. And by hitting the left bracket key on the keyboard, you can shrink the size of your brush. And you can just kind of paint over that. Here's uh, before and there's after. So just made a little slight minor adjustment, but you can control um, how much, how dark you actually want to go with that. So now that it's even selected, I can still, after the fact, go and make it darker if I want and adjust it to my liking. Now there are plenty of more adjustments you could do in here, such as the spot removal, the red eye removal, all that sort of thing. But I just wanted to kind of give you a basic rundown of what I do when I open my raw images. It's going to vary from image to image on what I do, but this is just kind of a basic overview. And then once I am complete in this window, I will open the image, which will open it in Photoshop. And here I can duplicate the layer and make further adjustments. I can sharpen the image, I can do any other editing thing I want, but I first just wanted to show you my workflow adapting with the ARW file to make it work with my Mac, since my Mac did not like to read the ARW files from Sony. So thanks for watching, hope this was useful to those of you that had similar problems getting your RAW files to work, or if you were interested in starting to shoot RAW and you were just a JPEG shooter before and wanted to see more of the flexibility that you could bring out of the shadows and the highlights. So again, thanks for watching, catch you next week.